Should do it, lad. Our brand new Infini flavor ice cream makers ready for business. Patent pending, of course. Its infrared taste analyzer can sample any flavor and turn it into a delicious ice cream. What do you say, Gromit? Fancy pushing the button on our inaugural batch? Wensleydale cream, anyone? Get it churn, lad. Just in time to be road tested in front of paying customers at the fair this weekend. And all in a good cause, hmm? Miss Flit says it's to raise money to rebuild the donk shelter. The poor pups have been homeless for too long. Imagine if you had no place to call home, sweet kennel, from it. Hmm, must be the breeze. Miss Flit says the strays have been making mischief all over town. On Tuesday, Mrs. Gabbley's shop was terrorized by a gang of terriers. No doubt they'll come to heel once they've a proper roof over their heads. I'm sure everyone will give generously at the fair to build them a new home. I can't be the only dog lover in town. Nora Gromit, wild dogs, stray scoundrels, mangy good-for-nothing mongrels mangling me machine. They must be some of the escapees. Oh no, me crank. Me lever. The flavor engraver, the brains of our custom flavor scanner lad. It's been scrambled. The four-legged fiends. I'm sorry, lad, but this is some serious damage. I suppose it's nothing that can't be fixed. I'll tinker with the flavor engraver if you track down our filched crank and our lifted lever. And this cute one's going to need to be calmed down as well. Mind you, it'll take a month of ice cream sundaes to put things right if I can't patch things up. You've got to get them in order if we're going to have the Infini flavor ready for the fair this weekend. Come on, lad, you're a dog. You can reason with them. Your old toy certainly did the trick, didn't it, lad? Oh my, you used to being so attached to it took quite a spell to wean you off it, in fact. Now we can focus on getting this machine up and running. Oh, Gromit, this machine might not be completely cream crackered after all. Let's have a shifty. It's still a bit uh, discombobulated, lad. <laughs> he swiped it again. Careful, Gromit. The Infini flavor motor is volatile without its crank.
dogs out. This mangy whippet is is ravaging my roses. Came hurtling out of your master's house with some sort of bone in its mouth. Hmm. Feeding the strays really is the last straw. Now he's gone underground and Lord knows what he's doing to my roots. And where's Wallace when I need him? Are there no real men left in this world to protect a woman's property? Don't just stand there. Do something. You're a dog. Can't you reason with him? Morning, Private. At ease, Private, at ease. I'm sure by now you've received intelligence about the morale-raising ops this weekend. Should be a jolly old time. Like when Ensor used to come and rouse the troops, reminded the squaddies what they were fighting for. I remember being stationed in Algeria, and the association organized a whole day of fanfare. Unbelievable! There was Fatima the Snake Charmer, the ever-popular Monkey Toss competition, even a couscous eating contest. Which reminds me, I expect you to be at the fair when I display my digestive prowess. <laughs> the pie-eating contest, Private. You must have seen the sign-up sheet in town. Nobody will challenge the great Major, though. I shall be uncontested. They don't call me Cool Hand Crumb for nothing, you know. Those are my biscuits, Private. And very delicious they are, too. Can't share them with you, though. For optimal nutritional efficiency, today's soldiers must stick to their rations. So, no wicky-wickies for you, I'm afraid. Oh, tremendous flavor. Hello, Gromit lad. How's Mr. Wallace? Have you heard about the fundraiser? I've never been to a proper town fair before. Oh, morning, pet. Out for walkies. Certainly a grand day for it. Anything I can do for you? Town's a buzz with the fundraiser this weekend, isn't it? About time somebody did something to build a new dog shelter. Ooh, I've had run-ins with all sorts of strays of late. Terriers, spaniels, mutts, even an Irish wolfhound. Should have seen the size of him when he went for me pork scratchings on top shelf. Sent me tumbling backwards and brought me awning crashing down. Ooh, I gave him what for and no mistake. Ah, uh, you mean you opened your gob and poor brute took fright. Ooh, mind your business and quit interrupting. This is why you haven't got any friends and spend all day talking to the birds. <laughs> I'm just in need of some intelligent company. Anyway, it's high time town got together to put the shelter back up. Wouldn't you say, Chuck? What you got there, Chuck? A pie-eating contest. Well, isn't that festive? Me? Oh, I don't know about that. I, I do love the odd meat pie, but a scoffing contest? That wouldn't be ladylike, would it? <laughs> You've trouble enough of being ladylike without a meat pie in your gob. Oh, do I? Tell that to Postman. He seemed quite taken with me this morning. It's only because he's got an eye defect. Oh, shut up, you curmudgeonly codger. You know what, Chuck? I will sign up for the contest. I think it's a splendid idea. And I plan on winning. In a most ladylike fashion, naturally. Let's see. Oh, just me and the Major, is it? Hmm. He's no match for Winnie Gabberly. There you go, Gromit. I expect you to attend my victory party. Ah, yes, the pie-eating contest. Nobody's signed up yet to take on the mighty Major Crumb. Pity, I'd love to meet another man. Toe to toe on the field of battle, mano a mano, feasting to the death until the best man wins. 
Edwina? She thinks she can out-eat the likes of me? Ho, ho, ho! That's a good one, Private. I'd love to see her staring down the barrel of a ketchup bottle. There's just no way she can win. Impossible. She could never. <laughs> These blinking biscuits. I've been munching on them all day. They're going to fill me up. Private! Attention! Get rid of these vile things! I've got to prepare for battle! My guts must be ready for all the pie I can throw at them if I'm going to crush that woman. She's challenged the wrong man! Battle stations! Gee woo and Tinky Wee may have their mischievous moments, but they knew better than to rummage in my roses. <laughs> ah, you did it! Thank goodness! You've rid my garden of the nasty little rascal and with little damage. Now be sure it never happens again. I don't want to see any more of your canine companions on my property. Do you understand? I suppose that lever does look a bit like an old bone, doesn't it? No wonder the crafty canine went and buried it. Give a dog a bone and into the ground it goes. It's their nature. Oh no. Did our fastening nut go missing? It holds the lever in place. It's a critical part of the apparatus, Gromit. Oh, this is no good, lad. That was my last number 12. What rotten luck. Hmm? Look at that! He found our nut! Fantastic, Gromit! Eh? Uh, perhaps I was a bit hard on him before. I didn't know the little one had a penchant for tinkering. Oh, he's just afraid. Heavens above, he's a positively petrified pooch. Poor little lad, we ought to call him Twitch. And there we have it, lad. Uncrossed a few cross wires and our flavour engraver is as good as new. Now we ought to be back in business. Up we go, lads. Nothing can stop our Infini flavour ice cream from taking off now. Hmm? Bit late for the post, eh? Oh, hello there. Uh, can I help you? Oh, good heavens, no. The question is rather, how can I help you? Name's Muzzle. Monty Muzzle. Philatelist, philosopher, philanthropist, and purveyor of fairground amusement. I hope by now you've heard about Monty Muzzle's Save the Dogs fundraiser fair to be held this weekend. Oh, uh, yes, we have. Uh, Gromit and I were just... Oh, glad to hear it. I was deeply saddened to hear of your recent tragedy, and I'm making it my duty as a dedicated and devoted dog lover to help you all raise the necessary funds to repair your canine shelter. Imagine all those precious animals out on the streets. A tragedy. What a shame for all those dogs. But Gromit and I might have the perfect contribution for the fair. We were just putting the finishing touches on our patent-pending Infini Flavor ice cream machine. Ice cream, you say? Ooh, who doesn't love ice cream? The creamy coldness, the satisfying sweetness, the profit margins. And our, our machine has custom flavor technology. Hmm. Its flavor scanner extracts taste molecules from any sample provided. We're able to make limitless varieties to suit any customer. 
My, that does sound impressive. Oh, bye, Eck, Mr. Walrus. I know a good money-making opportunity when I smell it. What do you say to this? With my financial firepower and your unique ice cream maker, we could put an Infini-flavor retail outlet on every beachfront from Blackpool to Bognor Regis. The world will be your Knickerbocker glory. Franchising. Do you hear that, lad? We could be ice cream barons. If you bring your invention to the fair and manage to make a hefty contribution for this most needed, um, uh, uh, oh yeah, a dog shelter. It's a deal. Gromit and I couldn't be more excited. Oh, our in-house creamery assures us peak freshness. Speaking of the dogs, Gromit and I have come across three little lads who need new lodgings. Well, look at that. Aren't they the most precious things you've ever seen? My charity begins now, and I've got the perfect home for them. Yeah, quick-looking devils, too. Well, I won't take up any more of your time, Mr. Willard. Walk is. Come on, you. Your new home awaits. Off they go, lad. Uh, say goodbye. Be seeing you and your contraption at the fair, Mr. Wallace, and uh, be sure to bring your wallet. Roll up, roll up, ladies and gentlemen. Now, welcome to Monty Muzzle's fundraise affair. It fair warms my heart to see so many charitable souls here today. So let me warm yours by selling you a handful of tickets, available for a nominal fee, the proceeds of which will put a smile on the face of a homeless and abandoned puppy. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, them tickets is good for every attraction. You can fry your favourite food, take on a chicken in a game of wits, or ride the mighty muzzler. Every penny goes to charity, every ticket, in short, will wag a tail. I say, Gromit, isn't this a thrill? And such a noble cause, rebuilding a shelter for your canine companions. Oh, your new chum must have dropped his toy in excitement. I bet the little fella's having a grand day out. Probably never been to a fair before. Hey, that must be the remains of one of the flies that was blowing around this morning. Can't abide litter, so I tore it up and offered it as slips of paper to the punters. Here are some tickets, lad. Go and find your friends and have some fun. Ho, ho, ho. Just like me days in the RAF. Biggest thrill I've had in years. <laughs> Just can I find the right plumbing words? Hundred, fourteen, hundred, fifteen, hundred, sixteen. Hmm. Let's see. Count this row across. Assume that the jar is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hmm. Can't be certain. One hundred and ninety. Oh, bother. I've lost count now. <laughs> Hello, Gromit. I'm sorry. I'm just ever so keen to win the grand prize. Normally, I'm very skilled at counting produce in a shop. So I reckon this booth is my best chance of success. I've entered 12 guesses already, and I know it's for charity and all, but these tickets don't come cheap. And back to counting, if you don't mind. There you are, you coochie coos, you! Ah, the missus says I need more mates, does she? <laughs> Well, I've got the birds in sky and bugs on sill to keep me company. You won't find me making up numbers at some flipping fair. Good, because you're not invited. 
Here, birdie. Come to Papa Gabbley. One hundred and nineteen, one hundred and twenty, one hundred and thirty-one, one hundred and twenty-two. Don't think a little teamwork is against the rules, eh? Here, you have a go. That seemed like it could almost be right, Gromit. Cross your toes, lad. These are the last of the tickets. Congratulations. You are the winner of a grand and fantabulous prize. I hate we did it. Fantastic! We won, Gromit! Congratulations, sir. Very well done. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Mosul. Quite a bit of brain power it did. So, what's the grand and fantabulous prize then, Mr. Mosul? I must say I can't wait to see what I've won. Yes, well, um, yeah, just as it's always better to give than receive, um, I say the satisfaction of your triumph, plus our undying gratitude for the charitable donation you've made towards our noble cause, our prizes in and of and um, by themselves, wouldn't you say, Mr. Panier? Chuck. Well, they're all very well, but I thought... Prizes that last a lifetime. Up here, and in here. But, but, but the sign says... Oh, quit bellyache in your big girl's blouse. <laughs> oh, um, it's hardly fitting for a gentleman such as yourself. Here, have a blinking bubblegum bubble. But, but... Oh, all right. And one for the mutt as well. Oh, the events for charity, but I spent all of my tickets for this one blooming ball of bubblegum. Enjoying the fair? Must be easy to enjoy such simple pleasures when you're a dog. Not knowing the pain of unrequited love. You just wander through life, sniffing and scratching your way to happiness, while I must endure the loneliness of living without a man worthy of my hand. Oh. But then there is Mr. Muzzle, raising all of those funds for our poor, homeless pups. I've never seen such altruism in all my years. He may be of meagre means himself, but he's rich in other ways. Oh, and what a handsome partner he'd make. Certainly compared to the rest of the town's buffoons. Are there no real men here worthy of the name? I want someone strong, brilliant and brave to lavish me with praise. For instance, I had my hair done this morning. And did anyone notice? Not one of them. I'm sure Mr. Muzzle would have, had he not been so busy. But what does a woman have to do to attract attention?
Just look at her, loitering around that manky muzzle's booth of accomplishments. She's smitten, she is, by him. Disgusting. Makes me so angry, I could blow me top. Ooh, I'm Monty Muzzle. I'm the most charitable, sensitive gentleman there ever was. I'm a blooming hero. Fair. Big pile of wet less, if you ask me. And why you want mutt? Can't you see I'm working here? She wants a sensitive man, does she? Well, that's what Miss Flit will be getting. I'm composing her a poem. Near finished too, except for the last line. Got the whole thing memorized even. I just cannot write the ending. Dearest Felicity, your eyes are as deep as the murkiest law. Your teeth are as straight as Blackpool rock. Your haunches are sturdy. Your bearing is bold. Ugh, I've got nothing. Look at me, talking to a dog. Ah, going crazy you are, Mike Biscuit. Now, moggy off and let a man work. All right, yeah, create a clairvoyant codfish. Let's see what you have to see. Ah! Cravens, what a bunch of rubbish! Let's see if this fortune's got anything useful for my poem. Your hair could be mistaken for pirate's gold. Ah, that's no half bad, that is. I just work. I'm a blinking genius, I am! No need for these rotten lines! I've got a perfect one right here! Hello there, Felicity. Oh, hello, Duncan. You look ravishing today. Why, thank you, Duncan. In fact, I've written you a poem in honour of your astounding beauty. What? You've written a poem? Every last word. Really? Well, let's hear it then. <clears throat> Dearest Felicity, your eyes are as deep as the murkiest loch. Your teeth are as straight as Blackpool rock. Your haunches are sturdy, your bearing is bold, and your hair could be mistaken for pirate's gold. I don't know what to say. Brilliant, eh? Noticed my hair. I did. Oh, Duncan, who could have guessed you're so sensitive and attentive to detail? Aye, my rugged Highland handsomeness may fool some, but inside, I'm nothing more than a caring and loving lamb. Come here, my little sugar plum fairy. Caring and loving lamb that's been rolling around in the barnyard too long is my no 
Holmes isn't mistaken? Oh, that's just my unique musk. Let's go down and stare longingly into each other's eyes. Have a pie to enter, do you? Give it here, and I'll get to it in due time. Quite the turnout of entries I've got. Bound to find a master of ceremonies in here somewhere. These pies are all absolutely disgusting. Didn't take you for the cheating sort. Willing to do anything to get ahead, are you? You'd cheat a little old lady out of a baking contest just to win your five minutes of fame as this afternoon's master of ceremonies. Then what are you doing, nosing about these entries? Keep to your own entry. But knowing what you filthy creatures are prepared to wolf down, I can't imagine you've much of a discerning palate. That would taste very good, would it, lad? I mean, fish-flavored ice cream? Who ever heard of such a thing? Unless... You, uh, haven't made a new feline friend, have you, for chance? Oh, well, uh, yes, then. Uh, one fish-flavored ice cream coming up. Uh, step to it, lad. Looks a bit different. A familiar, flaky crust. My, my, my. Oh, could it be? Oh. Mm. Oh, yes, this is more like it. What a belter this one is. Oh, a crisp outside with a warm potato inside. Oh, this takes me back to my days as a boy. But, but it, it, it's still missing something, some key flavour from it past. Now, still, I'll, I'll hold on to your entry as provisional for now. If you think of something to give it that definitive je ne sais what, come back and I'll consider it. Till then, the competition's still open. Ah, a new addition to your shocking previous entry. I have no doubt that you almost certainly cheated, but without actual proof. I'll have to let that pass. Let's see how you did. Why, uh, this is, uh, yes, yes, resplendent. I've never tasted a pie quite like this, a savoury crust. Enhanced by a one-of-a-kind flavour, if I am not mistaken, of lightly battered cod. Oh yes, your entry triggers deep, unhappy memories. Oh, I can see myself as a slip of a lad, behind the counter in a mother's chippy. I'm the happiest lad there's ever been eating complimentary portions of freshly fried North Sea cod and chips. Stupendous! 
How you did it, dog, I'll never know. But you've won. Congratulations. You're the first beast to become the master of ceremonies of the pie-eating contest. I'll be meeting you on stage then. Time to get this pie-eating contest underway. Be seeing you on stage in two shakes of a dog's tail. Gather round. Our first order of business is to celebrate this fine figure of a dog as winner of the pie-baking contest. Atta boy, Chuck. I knew you could do it. Hey! <laughs> and to honour this achievement, Fido here will preside as master of ceremonies of the pie-eating contest to commence shortly. I'm here. The Major doesn't stand a chance. Ha! I once ate a kidney pie the size of a Shetland pony. And I had room for dessert and coffee. Your starter's pistol, doggo. And now, I'd just like to say a few words. Where are me blinking notes? Hmm, you were up here just a minute ago. Um, <clears throat> yeah, well, um... It's not every day that tragedy strikes a helpless town like this. But I'm most honoured to be here in your moments of need to help you all collect enough funds to rebuild the orphanage. Um, uh, that is, uh, the orphanage for lost dogs. And I'm delighted to say that I haven't seen such an outpouring of charitable giving among fairgoers since, well, since, uh, 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 since uh, uh, the great Lancashire earthquake of, uh, oh, let me see now, uh, uh, some, uh, yes, some years ago. I don't remember hearing about that. Ah, oh, dreadful it was. Teapots tossed from their cosies. Sheep shaken right out of their fleeces. Most dreadful indeed. So, keep up the good work here today and be sure to spend, spend, spend as our wonderful attractions as it's all in such a very, very good cause. Now, without further ado, uh, Colonel Crumbs and uh, Mrs. Gobbledygook uh, will go head to head in the pie eating contest. Now, Mutt, pull the trigger. Aye, it's been a busy week. Just one good deed after another. First, I uh, takes in three homeless hounds, then helps the town. Do-gooders cough up the cash for a noble cause. <laughs> yeah. And now I've trapped me a tricksy little trespasser. Now listen here, mutt. I built this fair up from the sweat of me brow and a pile of scrap. And if you think I'm going to let a molly-coddled mongrel chuck a spanner in the works, you don't know Monty Muzzle. Aye, your time on wheel comes soon enough. And being man's best friend, you wouldn't want to stop the ride and disappoint your punters now, would you? But until it's your turn, you can blinking well stay put. Oh, and don't start whining and yelping for help. You'll have my security system to deal with if you don't keep the noise down. What is it? What's going on in here? Up to something in here, are we? Down, Mutt. You 
it's not your dinner time yet. Hmm. Seems to have been a false alarm. But I'll be back in here at the drop of a hat if there's any monkey business. What's going on here? What's all the racket about? Oh, another blinking dead dog. The workshire whelp hadn't even been for walkies yet. <laughs> Pity. Ah, oh, get off me, you filthy beast. Oh, oh. That'll be an extra few hours pulling duty for you. No more out of you. Your blinking ride's not fit for service! Ah, there we go. Hello, Twitch. Gromit was looking for you. Enjoying the fair? Oh, I see. You'd like to have a go on the ride? Well, I don't know. Where the heck's Gromit? He should be showing you around. No, well, I suppose I can take a break. Let's go. I don't know if they let dogs on board, Twitch. Steady on. I know it's not fair, Twitch, but we can always ask. E easy there, boy. I've got quite a bit of strength for a little fella. Blinking Nora. You mean poor Gromit's inside the ride? What happened, lad? Monty Muzzle? Heavens above. Uh, Twitch, you better stay out of sight. I've got to see about getting Mr. Muzzle to shut down his ride. <laughs> Your duty is as neglected as an abandoned puppy. Oh, I've never abandoned from it. Your hair could be mistaken for pirate's gold. Oh, well, uh, 
Uh, perhaps this one isn't for me. Your home smells of a patch of mold. Well, we've the odd bit, I know, but it's not that bad. The contest hasn't ended yet. Why, no, it's a last man... <coughs> woman standing competition. Oh, who's winning? <coughs> As if you had to ask, man. <laughs> by my count, the current leader by a thick crust is... Mrs. Gabberly! Hogwash! Woohoo! Mmm! And I'm relishing every bite! Ah, I'm just getting warmed up! We'll see about that. Mr. Wallace, would you mind bringing Paneer this slip of paper here when you've a moment? Righto. Excuse me, Paneer. Mrs. Gabberly wanted me to give you this. Ah. Must be a message to read out for the fair. <coughs> Testing. One, two. One, two. All fairgoers are cordially invited to attend Mrs. Vinnie Gabberly's victory celebrations to be held later this evening at the Gabberly residence. Uh, that's everyone including Major Croc. So long as he's humbled by defeat and pie fatigue. A scandalous suggestion. You'll regret the day you taunted a crumb. A note, Mr. Paneer. Your duty is as neglected as an abandoned puppy. Hmm. That's odd. Stop the ride. That's enough. Suppose I'd better get back to the station. Duty calls. A note, Mr. Paneer. Your hair could be mistaken for pirate's gold. But Duncan. Isn't that the last line of your poem? The one you wrote specially for me? Why, uh, yes, my dear. Its greatness is such that uh, it's already been quoted. The poem you wrote each and every line of? Why, uh, yes, of course. How odd. And that little pick-me-up comes courtesy of Monte Muzzle's fortune-telling machine. Generously shared by Mr. Wallace. A fortune? Wallace? Honey cakes? I can explain. Explain nothing. It's plagiarism, lies, deceit. I'm through with you, Duncan McBiscuit. Felicity, my wee North Country now. I wrote all those other lines. Especially that one about your haunches. A note, Mr. Paneer. Your home smells of a patch of mould? Hey, Mr. Paneer, you've clearly never been to the House of Gabberley, and now you never will. Hello, Mr. Paneer. I was wondering if from your elevated vantage point, well, you haven't seen Mr. Muzzle up to anything suspicious, have you? Suspicious? Oh, you mean like planning a secret surprise for the fairgoers? No, I can't say I have. But you never know what he's got up his sleeve. Uh, not exactly. I mean, anything unsavory. Up to no good. Mr. Muzzle? <laughs> no, no, no. He may offer less than substantial prizes for his attractions, but that's just in the name of charity. Don't be ridiculous, Wallace. Oh, all right then. Thanks anyway. Oh, yeah, look at these. Oh, the rest of me finished pies. The rest? Oh, my stomach told me I'd got through more than just these appetizers here. And Major Crumb has just learned that Mrs. Gabberly is in the lead by a most devastating pie margin. Oh, not feeling too tickety-boo right now. I... I think I might have been out by the enemy. And it seems the Major might be giving up, though he's only nine pies behind. Nine? That's it. I capitulate. I surrender. Hoist the white napkin of chronic pie fatigue. Yippee! Down goes the Major! Out for the count! At a boy, Mrs. Gabberly! Congratulations! Woohoo! 
Remember, ladies and gentlemen, if you like pies, Paneer's Purveyors of Peculiar Produce is open daily for all of your baking and pie-eating needs. I can't believe she beat me. I'll never be able to show my face in the officer's mess again. Never mind, Major Crum. You guzzled gamely. Perhaps you just bit off a bit more than you could chew. Perhaps. A man must know his limits. <sighs> the only thing that can lift my spirits now is a spin on that RAF ride, if you'll excuse me. Oh, I must have put on five stone. Too heavy. Balderdash. I was only on her this morning. Oh, just over our limits, I'm afraid, Corporal Crumb. You must have piled on pounds since then. That blinking contest? And I'm a major, don't you know? Aye, a major liability. So, you're banned, for safety's sake. Perhaps go for a jog or summit, and work off some of that extra weight. A, a balloon, always a good for a lift. A balloon, Major Crumb? Who doesn't love a festive balloon? Used to tie the old balloon to our knapsacks when we were in the long grass to distinguish ourselves from the enemy. Uh, perhaps you're ready for the ride now? You might be right. I'm feeling lighter on the feet already. Oh. <laughs> Weight limit fast. All aboard. Wahoo! Chuck away! Cabin doors to manual. Ready for takeoff. Blam! Yeah! Oh, heaven! Major Crumb's carrying too much excess baggage. The ride's going to burst, it seems. We've been hit! Oh, my giddy hands. Oh, my! Those poor ducks were trapped inside of that dreadful machine the Rob entire it. time. Rob it! Are you all right, lad? Where is that monster, Monty Muscle? He was just here a moment ago. Up, up and away. Oi, what are you doing? What is that? It's Monty Muscle! And our money! And Twitch! Arrivederci! Monty Muzzle stock is on the rise. This is no time to jettison the cream, Gromit. We don't do floats. What'll it be, lad? One scoop or two? Oh, good show, Muzzle, old chap. Not exactly what I planned, but a clean escape, nevertheless. A few quid, and one unexpected runt richer. What do you say, boys? Think we can find work for this emaciated mongrel? That's what I thought. Oh, Knickerbocker glory! Now we've shed some pounds. I wonder what could have been that heavy. We puncture free lead line tires. Those didn't come cheap, you know. And how are we going to land without any undercarriage? Huh. Look, we're gaining on him. The old churning arm had its work cut out with that much. Whew. Things are getting a bit sticky back there. Direct hit, lad. Hey, now he's up a gum tree. We'll catch him now. <laughs> hey, hey, they've run out of lift. Ah, sorry, my little twitching bag of bones, but no one's coming to save you now. Ah. 
Where do you think you're going with that? Eh, fine then. Let go. Escape me, a flea ridden friend. Hey, easy, easy. You've already been fed today. Ow! Get away. Stay away. Now, listen, chickens. Lucky grab, Grummit. Let's get out of here. We're one scoop too many, lad. Oh no, Grummit. Brace for impact. Gromit, Muzzle's moustache has gone flat. Don't lose that arm, Gromit. Nothing a little glue can't fix. Give that back right now. If you want your master to take you for walkies ever again, you'll be very careful with that. Careful, I said. My money! Oh, my beautiful money! Help! We're still falling, lad! We could do with some more air. It should hold us for just long enough. They might have flown too high and suffocated in the atmosphere. Happened to many a bomber in the war. And all to save a poor defenseless puppy. Who would have thought Wallace was so selfless and brave? Aye, but more importantly, that blinking fair ground felon still got our cash. He's due a soak in the mouth and a kick in the head. Honestly, Duncan, the last thing we need is more violence. We need heroes. Look, by Zeus's beard, what on earth is that? It's a giant moustache. Ah, I've seen beggar. You're alive! Uh, yes, and saved by a whisker. Something of a close shave, eh, Gromit? Oh, oh. Poor pups won't go homeless after all, Gromit. Me and Mr. Gadley would be thrilled to take them in. No, we wouldn't. Pipe down, you misery guts. Great. Yet another mouth to feed. Three mouths. Oh, no. Anyway, Gromit, feel free to pop by for walkies any time you like. Your friends will always be here. That little one's quite the hero. Have to keep him out of trouble from now on. Wallace! Oh, that was a feat of incredible bravery. Oh, it was nothing, Miss Flit, really. All in a day's work for Gromit and me. Couldn't let Muzzle run off with our twitch now, could we? A man like you is one in a million, Wallace. Your courage, your... Selflessness, your aerial acrobatics. You could have been killed, yet you saved the poor whippets, apprehended the monstrous Monty Muzzle, and saved everyone's fortunes. You're a true hero to the town. Oh, um, well, uh, um, thank you very much, Miss Flit. Mm hmm. Uh, now, if only I could find the piece I that... I uh... feel a little awkward asking you this, Wallace, but I was wondering... With a bit of elbow I grease, I'm sure Gromit and I can have this up and running again by Christmas. Wallace, I... I have a proposal for well, you. Well, I wonder where this goes. Oh, Wallace! Uh, yes? A proposal and a ring! 
How... how... Oh, shocking! I beg your pardon, Miss Flint. Oh, and so polite. Now, calm yourself, Felicity. Will I, Felicity Flint, marry you, Wallace? What? Pull yourself together, Felicity, my girl. You mustn't rush into this. I'm honoured that you would have me as your bride, Wallace. But I must think it over. I shall give you my answer within the week.